Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I am back with the Satanic Panic series that I started um, earlier this year, or last year rather. Um, and this is Volume 2. Volume 1 uh, was about the songs that scared me as a, as a kid. So I decided to, uh, in Volume 2, to kind of keep with that theme and I'm going to discuss the album covers that creeped me out as a kid. And so we'll go ahead and get into it. Um, the first one that I will talk about is this one right here. It's called Hotel California by the Eagles. Now, this album was part of my uncle's collection. And although it isn't overtly spooky, um, it gave... To me, as a kid, a very unsettling feeling. Uh, pulling it out from the uh, cabinet to take a look at the records that my uncle had. This one always gave me uh, just a weird feeling. And the back cover really did it. Um, a few years later, still as a kid, the Satanic Panic hit full steam. And this album was discussed as a Satanic Temple. The uh, hotel in the on the album cover um, and the back of the cover was said to have been a group of Satanists including Anton LaVey the founder of the Church of Satan uh, is said to also be on the back of the album now this increased my apprehension regarding this album and its cover uh, later as I discovered um, this was all bogus uh, Hotel California didn't have anything to do with Satanism or a satanic church or anything of that nature. Um, it was totally about the uh, music industry and the life <clears throat> that some of these uh, rock stars uh, find themselves getting into. Um, not much different than Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here with Welcome to the Machine, so to speak. Hotel California was the machine, uh, not the Church of Satan. But as a, as a child, this album, which had already given me apprehension, the album cover, uh, with the satanic story, it just, you know, it increased the legend, so to speak. So Hotel California... The next one I want to discuss is from a heavy metal band called Iron Maiden, uh, one of my favorite metal bands, and this is the album Killers. Killers is now my favorite Iron Maiden album, uh, or well, sometimes it fluctuates between Killers and Somewhere in Time, but I didn't know who Iron Maiden was as a kid, and this um, is, which is now one of my favorite album covers also of all time. But when I was a kid, it represented pure demonic evil. Uh, I remember seeing this for the first time in a record store. Um, and later again, during my introduction to the Satanic Panic, through neighbors and my dad, who was a minister, and he got wrapped up in the Satanic Panic kind of, you know, anti-rock and roll thing going on in the 80s. Um, and this was one of the bands that was on the hit list so to speak uh, I remember seeing this first time in a record store uh, again but you know once it was um, talked about on uh, a sermon that I heard from a TV evangelist called Gary Greenwald he's basically a Richard Simmons lookalike uh, preacher and he talked about the album cover about the satanic Eddie and all the shenanigans going on in the background on the front cover. Uh, embarrassingly enough, I had always just paid attention to the face and the hair and some of the little images in the background, the black cat, you know, in the little window, things of that nature. And I never noticed that Eddie had just murdered someone <laughs> until much later. I wasn't very observant when I was distracted by Satan, apparently. So, um, Killers, Iron Maiden. Um, this album really petrified me as a kid. Um, this is called...
called Face the Music by Electric Light Orchestra. And if you have never heard the first song on this album called Fire on High, you need to listen to it immediately. Uh, and look at this album cover as you do it. I listed, listed this song uh, on my Satanic Panic Volume 1 video of songs that scared me as a kid. Uh, and it is the first song on this album. And if this album cover isn't eerie enough, when accompanied by the intro to Fire on High, it will send chills down your spine. I mean, especially if you're a latchkey kid in the 80s at home alone during the winter months when it gets dark sooner. And, you know, you've, <laughs> you're watching one of the TV evangelist videos that your parents you know made you watch to talk about the evils of rock and roll and he plays a cliff of fire on high and accompanies it you know with the uh, album cover i mean this album cover gave me a sense of doom and when i heard that first track i was like almost paralyzed with fear over it um later in years i introduced this album to my kids and uh I played it for my daughter, and she was just absolutely horrified for Fire on High. And to this day, she does not like that song. She does not like anything that has uh, reverse language, um, uh, you know, backwards masking, things of that nature. <laughs> Which is very creepy, I do admit. Um, but later, this became one of my favorite albums again. A lot of these albums I'm going to talk about later became albums I really liked. Uh, so this takes us to the next album. Uh, very popular album here, Highway to Hell by ACDC. Uh, you know, no band upset the apple cart in my church and family like ACDC. Uh, you know, now we see, you know, or, well, I do, and most people see ACDC as just kind of a, you know, rowdy bunch of rabble rousers and, you know, they're having some sort of tongue in cheek sort of fun, body humor, you know. But back in the early 80s, ACDC was the Antichrist Devil's Children. That's what they said the name stood for. They were linked to killers such as Richard Ramirez um, and Ricky Casso. Uh, which we'll discuss later, you know, in the Satanic Panic series. But they were absolutely, you know, a horrifying group. Uh, songs like Hell's Bells and Shoot to Thrill from Back in Black was bad enough. But when, you know, I discovered and my dad discovered Highway to Hell and the song Night Prowler, you know, that was sort of the push off the proverbial cliff for my dad. This was the most evil band of all time, and, you know, that was his opinion. And I admit that that sort of sickly, pale tone uh, that Angus has on his face here, you know, that devil tail and that sort of raunchy look on his, on his face, combined with, like, the dead eyes of Malcolm, and, you know, that really scared me, um, you know. When I was a kid, and the back cover is even worse, um, as you see Angus here. Uh, on, I mean, I honestly thought ACDC were demons. I mean, that's how uh, that's how my mindset was, you know, as a kid, because I grew up in that satanic panic, being told, you know, certain things about these groups, and and I believed them because these were my authority figures. You know, these were my parents and my, you know the people at the church and just really, uh, you know, I put a lot of, or everything in, into what they said. Uh, you know, later again, this is one of the albums, uh, Highway to Hell's Problem, my favorite ACDC album. It's a great album. A lot of great tracks on it. And I uh, learned to enjoy Night Prowler, not be afraid of it. Um, so this next album here, on Your Feet or On Your Knees, um, Blue Oyster Cult. Now, Blue Oyster Cult always had weird album covers, but this haunting, very, I guess, unsettling cover 
um, this one always sent like a shiver down my spine. I mean, that hearse, that church, that atmosphere, all of it. It's like creepy. And it reminded me a lot of an old movie called Burnt Offerings for some reason. And I think it had a lot to do with the hearse. And, you know, I could just imagine that chauffeur and Burnt Offerings getting out of that and going into that church with the, uh, with the, the casket that he liked to push around in that film. <laughs> creepy. Uh, but, you know, Blue Oyster Cult, Don't Fear the Reaper, was, um, you know, it was uh, Agents of Fortune was where I heard Don't Fear the Reaper. But I had already heard it, and I had linked it with evil and suicide, and, you know, before I even saw this album cover by Blue Oyster Cult. And this one was really disturbing for kind of uncertain reasons. I guess it just had this sort of eerie creepy atmosphere but you know it haunting me uh, you know as much or more than hotel california did uh, after uh, it's just something very very off about blue oyster cult when i was a kid okay we're going to move on to this album this is the gene simmons uh solo effort kiss um now my cousin was always a big kiss fan and i was always scared to death of kiss when i was a kid uh, because of him and his dark room and the lava lamps which for some reason spooked me when i was a really little kid i mean i started liking them later and i, I own several now but when i was a little kid it lava lamps for some reason just really scared me i mean do you is anybody you know, were you guys scared of anything like that? That was just kind of not really scary, but just kind of weird to you? I mean, that was that was me with lava lamps back when I, I was a really small child. Um, and, the, and the Kiss albums he had and the posters, you know, metal posters. But Gene Simmons was out absolutely a nightmare for me as a kid. I mean, I, I thought the guy was a murderer. I mean, I honestly thought he was a, he was a child killer. You know, blood, fire, all that makeup, just, you know, just really disturbed me completely. You know, so when I saw this album cover, it gave me, I mean, I saw other Kiss album covers, but this one, for some reason, stuck out and just gave me almost just nightmare visions. I mean, I couldn't even stand to go by the door to my cousin's room you know, walk down the hall past his room for fear that Gene was going to reach out and grab me as I ran past. <laughs> and, you know, now we see Gene as kind of a clown and, you know, but back then he was, you know, he was the devil. Um, okay, moving on, we have this album from Jackson Brown here. And, you know, minus the blue sky, um, there's something that was always, something about a light in a window in the darkness, or the lamppost, that kind of always made me apprehensive. I know I sound like when I was a, a small child that I was just terrified of everything, but that wasn't really the case. It was just certain things because of the way that I was brought up, I was always afraid of being, um, you know, separated from my family as a, as a kid or something bad happening, you know, um, because I was an only child. And, and this, and when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about me being very young. So uh, I was about 10 or so though when i discovered this album my uncle's collections and it really didn't make me it didn't really didn't scare me at that age but it just gave me this uneasy feeling kind of like hotel california um i remember hearing about richard ramirez around that time around 85 on the news and thinking that you know he maybe he was in that house killing somebody you know <laughs> so i had a very vivid imagination as a kid still do Okay. All right, this brings us to Led Zeppelin. And this was another of my uncle's collection. Um, there was just something about this one that made me feel something was off. Uh, again, a lot of these albums weren't really 
overtly, you know, scary, but just unsettling or uh, gave me a feeling of unease. And this one was one of those albums. Um, and, you know, what was that object, that obelisk or whatever? I mean, it was it was almost like a strange a- alien, otherworldly sort of, you know, invasion of the body snatchers vibe, sort of what this gave me as a kid. And and uh, that, that always got to me, you know, something that was familiar but very off. You know, you could tell something was not right. Very invasion of the body snatchers. Um. And then later, when I learned of Jimmy Page's interest in the occult from the, you know, the satanic panic crowd and the preachers, it made me really feel discomfort about this this album and Led Zeppelin in general, which Led Zeppelin is, you know, now one of my favorite bands of all time, uh, probably my second favorite band of all time. Uh, And I, I really like this album. I really like Achilles' Last Stand. Um... Okay, all right, we're nearing the end here, and just got a couple more to share with you, and this is Them by King Diamond. Now, I was a bit older when this came out, and, um, you know, it really didn't scare me, per se, but uh, just gave off that, uh, that light in the window vibe that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, maybe like an isolation of some sort. And, but, you know, what made this album even more eerie was when I listened to it. And, you know, I I found, I was probably around, I don't know when this came out, 88. So I was probably around 13 when it came out. You know, so I was, you know, I was not a kid at this point. Well, I was a kid, but not like a really little kid. So it didn't really spook me that much, but... You know, I was still under the very strict um, church um, ideas of Satan and the satanic panic and things of that nature. And so, you know, I I did um, listen to a lot of that stuff. But although I, you know, uh, I found King Diamond's falsetto to be kind of funny at times, like a, like a, yeah a Muppet or something singing metal. Uh, but the concept of this album and the disturbing music and the lyrics and, you know, that sort of, that cover, that Desolate House on the cover was a perfect recipe, you know, to sustain the creepiness of this album. So uh, that's why I included this album. And finally, um, in this video, I may make another one, uh, regarding some more album covers if I, you know, if I can think of any more right off the bat. But this album straight up sent cold death chills down my spine as a kid. I mean, not only seeing the devil image, which, you know, was something I was taught from birth about Satan seeking you to devour you. And and, and I was always... um you know, terrified of sort of like commanding authority figures when I was a small child. So not only seeing the devil image, but in a a commanding tone was extremely disturbing to me as a young kid. And, uh, you know, although it was a, you know, I did challenge authority from time to time as a kid, that my really real challenge came later in life, you know, in my teenage years when I was a not afraid of anybody or anything. But when I was a kid, I was terrified of authority figures. And it came to, you know, when it came to the devil in that commanding tone, you multiply that by a thousand. You know, I was always afraid of being kidnapped by a satanic cult because of the satanic panic. Always drilled that in our heads. You know, these satanic cults are out there. They're, they, they live on the mountain. They're going to... You know, they'll find you alone. They will get you in some way. They were even like places around where I lived that were mentioned and brought up. And it was just a, a really, really strange time. I mean, we were not only terrified of nuclear war going on, but, you know, and drugs and 
all that as a kid, but you know, then we had to had to worry about satanic cults running around. Apparently, uh, we all figured out later that it was, you know, just a big uh, a big panic. But you know, as a kid, we didn't know that. And so this album was one of the worst ones for me to see. But um, that sort of sums up, I guess, this episode. Again, I may mention some more album covers. I may mention some more songs in one of the other episodes. But this will do it for Satanic Panic Volume 2. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd like to hear your stories. Maybe some of the album covers that spooked you as a child. Um, you know, we're going to be trying to expand this series a little bit more later, but right now that's it guys. And, uh, you know what I'm going to say, take care until next time. <laughs>